Thank you. On behalf of the EFD, Marta Andreasen. Marta. Thank you, Chair. Mr. Trichet, you have raised the refinancing rate twice in the last year, and it is now 1.5%. In the same time frame, the Fed has left U.S. interest rates at 0.25%, and they are showing no signs of raising it. We have received new statistics from the Eurozone economies showing growth coming to a halt. Some experts in the bond industry consider that based on recent history, the mean interest rate of central banks should be 1% below the annual rate of GDP. In America, please. In America, that might be the case at the moment, but in Europe, growth is dropping below the interest rate. My question to you is, is it not the time to reconsider in lowering the ECB refinancing rate by a full percentage point, that is 100, 100 basis points, to try and get our economies moving again? My second question relates to the situation of uh, the biggest economies in the Eurozone, Germany and France. Markets are looking to countries in trouble, but they are also looking to the reaction of those stronger economies. Discontent in Germany is spreading throughout all institutions, and France cannot get the Parliament to agree on the constitutional change for a zero deficit. Will the ECB continue to ignore these reactions? Thank you. Uh, now, let me uh, embark on uh, monetary policy. I need to say that uh, we are doing exactly what we judge appropriate to deliver price stability and to continue to anchor solidly the inflation expectations. Is it contradictory with the idea that the economy has to grow and that uh, we must have active job creation? We trust that it is not contradictory. Let's make the thought experiment that we lose the solid anchoring of inflation expectations then we would have all our nominal market and long interest rates augmenting because they would incorporate the uh, additional inflation that the market would anticipate in the future. Our own population will be frightened to see that they cannot count on a currency which maintains its value. And more generally, confidence will, would disappear uh, in a large number of uh, constituencies of economic agents. So to the extent that we are fully in line with our definition, close to two, less than two, we trust that we also contribute to the appropriate prosperity of the Eurea. It is the reasoning of the, of the European. Uh, Marta. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Mr. Rain, it is something of a religious belief around here that the financial markets are responsible for the woes in the sovereign debt crisis. The reaction the authorities, that is the Commission and ESMA, had earlier this month when renewed pressure was put on financial share prices was to look for a Europe-wide ban on short selling. Short selling is considered to be among the greatest faults of financial traders, but since the ban, the shares of the French and Italian banks, the ones the Commission was trying to protect, have dropped by 18%. If my pension fund was in those banks, I would not be very happy with this result. So my question to you is, do you consider that the ban was successful in protecting the French and Italian bank shares? Success of the measures is important to restore confidence in the markets. To Mr. Juncker, in relation to the aggravation of the crisis during August, the one that uh, caused you problems during your, your holidays, and taking into account the calls like that of 70% of the Irish people who call for debt forgiveness because they, are, they cannot eat in order to pay for their mortgages. Are we not coming to the moment when we are running out of stopgap solutions and we are going to have to face the music and allow defaults to occur? 
That is, allow the banks that cannot survive to go bankrupt and allow also the countries in trouble to default. Thank you.